Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, this new video. This one is paper 31 of May, June 2001 for A-level math. Uh, with that being said, obviously, let's move on to the questions we have for you today. So this is question number one. So here we have to expand this in ascending powers of x up to x cube. So one by one, here we have what? 1 minus 6x power 1 over 3. Now we have to check. Well, this is plus 1. Good. And this is fraction, so good to go. So we can use our formula for binomial expansion. So this will be what? 1 plus n. x here is minus 6x, right? And the plus. n minus n will be minus 2 over this one. Here we have x squared, so minus 6 squared, x squared over the value of 2 factorial. And then plus uh, my 1 over 3 times minus 2 over 3 and minus 5 over 3. And then we have minus 6x cubed over the value of 6, which is 3 factorial, right? 3 factorial is 6. And let's try to simplify this one by one. Again, you can, you can always use your, I, I would recommend actually using your calculator here because you do not want to make silly mistakes, if that makes sense, right? So here we have 1. This will become 2, so minus 2x. Now for these ones, let me use my calculator. So we have what? 1 over 3 uh, times minus 2 over 3 times 36 divided by 2. That will be minus 4 x squared. Now this one, 1 over 3 times minus 2 over 3 times minus 5 over 3 times 6 power 3 divide by 6, that should be 13 1 over 3 x cubed. Again, here we have a minus sign, we have to include minus over here. Right? If that makes sense. So here we have to double check, so 1 over 3 times minus 2 over 3 times minus 5 over 3. That's the first thing we do. You'll have something positive that multiply by minus 6 cubed that will be negative divided by 6. That will be minus sign over here. So finally your answer will be what? 1 minus 2x minus 4, this 1, minus 13, 1 over 3x cubed. Now if you want to, you can expand this. So 13 times 3 is what? Plus 1 on top, that will be 40. So all you can write, minus 40 over 3x cubed as well. So this is the other way of doing this. You can write this or this. This will be your answer for question number one. Now let's move on to question number two. Here we have to find dy by dx, which is differentiate these things. So one, we have y equal to ln of one plus sine two x. So usually, let's say we have y equal to ln of x. So dy by dx will be what? Pretty easy. That will be one over the value inside will be just x. Fair enough, right? So similarly, let's say I have y equal to ln of 2x. That will be, dy by dx will be 1 over value inside 2x, then multiply by d by dx of this will be 2. That makes sense, right? So same idea applies over here. Let's see what uh, can we do with this. So in this case, we have what? 1 over the value of 1 plus sine 2x times d by dx of this one will give you what? We'll give you 0 here plus 2 cos 2x. So you will have 2 cos 2x over the value of 1 plus sine 2x. Okay, this is part one of the question. Now uh, this one is pretty simple as well. As you can see it is a fraction so we can use the quotient rule. It is only a formula we have to know. So dy by dx here will be what? Will be the first one, as it is, the base, times d by dx of this one will be sec square x. Now minus the tan x as it is, times d by dx of this one will be just 1, and the whole thing divided by base square, x square. So you will have x sec square this, minus tan of x, over the value of x square. Okay? And this is your question number two. Now let's move on to question number three. So a point A and B have 
coordinates this one and this one now i like to work with vector forms i can write them again as what i will have oa will be given to me as minus one two and five and ob will be given to me as two minus two eleven okay good to know now we have a plane p that passes through the point b this is the passing point and is perpendicular to ab so what's the first thing we can find right away well i can find ab what is the direction ab so ab will be what ob minus oa by definition that'll be this minus oa you will have minus one two five so two minus minus one will be three minus two minus two will be minus four and 11 minus five will be six there you go this is my direction of ab now well the thing we can do here is we can actually draw something for it to make sense right or at least we can understand better what's happening so here we have a plane for example this is my plane as an example now we are told that well the plane contains the line b so we have b right here for example right here this is b let's say a b is perpendicular so have to be this is a this is a over here and we do understand it is perpendicular so it is at 90 degrees to the plane now what else is at 90 degrees to a plane you will say well obviously i can say the normal is something which is perpendicular to my plane so thus by comparison or definition i can say well the normal is equal to ab because as i can see they are both perpendicular to my plane now why do i need the normal well i have i need the normal to find the equation of a plane so part one find the equation of a plane p giving you answers in terms of this okay fair enough so how would you find the equation of a plane using your formula right which is this one this is any point on the plane this is the normal and the normal so again we have the normal already which is ab as we have seen this is the normal so you will have 3 minus 4 6 is equal to 3 minus 4 6 now any point on the plane as we can see it will be b given to you by the question b is 2 minus 2 11 dot product will be what this time this will be 6 this time this will be plus 8 and this time this will be plus 6 6 so let's see what happens so we have this over here and this will be 6 plus 8 plus 6 6 that will be 80 on this side now finally we have to convert this into this form pretty easy that'll be 3 x minus 4 y plus 6 z is equal to 80. Mm -hmm. and this is a uh, new equation of the plane in this form now for part two we have to find the acute acute is angle less than 90 between p the plane and the x-axis now again we can, oh sorry y-axis my apologize y-axis now the first question is well what is the direction of the y-axis so if you recall uh let's say for any kind of other kind of questions when you say oh uh on the x-axis we know y is zero on the uh, y-axis x have to be zero but here we have x y z so on the y-axis the rest will have to be zero which is x z have to be zero now the direction of this line will be what direction of the y-axis if the rest have to be zero x have to be zero zero and this have to be just one by definition the direction could be this one the reason why you say well, okay why is this one well, it could be anything really let's say the direction is zero nine zero but i can if since it is a direction i can just divide by nine and you will have back to zero one zero so this is the direction of of the y-axis if that makes sense right all right cool now i have the direction of the y-axis i know the plane meets the axis because i need to find the angle now i can first do something by observation for example this is my plane let's say this is my uh, y-axis going in this direction i guess in this in this diagram right y-axis right here 
Let's pretend. Now I understand, plane is defined by its normal. Normal will be something at 90 degrees to the plane. Now this is 90 degrees to the plane. Now what can I do now is I can first find the equation. Now I can first find the angle between the normal and the, and the line. And then using that to find the angle between the line and the normal right here. So again, I can first find this one and then find this one by taking 90 minus this one. So let's go. Let's find theta first. So dot product of normal and y-axis is equal to the, the formula we have for this equation. That will be normal of the plane has been found to be what? 3 minus 4, 6, right? And then dot of y is 0, 1, 0 is equal to magnitude will be what? We have uh, 9 plus 16 plus 36. That will be 61. This is 1 and cos theta. So simplify. Here you will have this time this, this time this, and this time this. That should be minus 4 equal to root of 61 cos of theta. Now, cos of theta is what? Cos of theta will be what? Minus this over this. So finally, theta have to be cos inverse of minus 4 over root of 61. That will be 120.8 degrees. Again, the thing that happened here is because you can see cos, the value here is negative. It will be in this quadrant and in this quadrant. So what happened, it means that, for example, if you were to extend this line, the line y, right? So this is a straight line, obviously. Instead of finding this one, we found the other side right here. Now to find this one pretty easy, that'll be 180 minus 120.8. So theta will have to be 59.2 degrees. But again, we're not trying to find theta, we're trying to find the angle over here between the line and the plane. So the angle we want to find is 90 minus 59.2. That will be 30.8. And this is the answer for question number two for the acute angle between P and the y-axis. I hope the first half of the video was somewhat helpful. If you guys would love to access the full video, feel free to click on the Patreon link on the main page. Otherwise, you can go to the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.